BC government claw back child benefits from family with newborn. Now, this story isn't just about nothing. This is about infamous Ryan Sats. Ryan Sats, who put tents on our blocks, turned our block into a urinal, a giant urinal, made a lot of us sick, made our neighborhood dangerous, did poverty discrimination, tried to say that people on hard drugs were just poor people. That was poor people bashing. And now, this guy's always in the news, the poverty pimp. Let's see if he lives in a tent. He just had a new baby, two children. He has two children. Now, does he want his children to live in a tent? Or is that just for your children? Whose children? If you're not behind the wheel of your Jeep Wrangler. Sorry about that. Whose children? Does he want in tents? He's actually responsible for making a tent city and everybody that died in it by burning Their was second his fault. child want other parents to know about an unexpected financial burden they face. As CTV's Ben Milger reports, because... That's probably why he was down here trying to pimp and, and, and uh, harass the police down here. And uh, the cleaning people trying to say they're rude to the druggies on the street. And that wasn't true because I was live. I was completely live. So he's whining about money. Shillington, isn't that a great name, you know? Shill she came here and shilled for tents for Canadians. She actually, these two people with her other, you know, white privileged people that don't live in this neighborhood. They actually came down here and got people to live in tents. It was absolutely horrible. He wasn't, he, he went to Langara University and he wasn't smart enough to know you don't put people's pee and poo on streets. Worse yet, he knows the neighborhood that he put tents in is native town. He didn't even study their culture to know, you know, when they had tents, they put their poo and pee away from the tents and they dug holes. Everybody did around the world, not just the natives. But he put tents on cement. He made everybody suffer, except for the people that checked out on hard drugs or people like him that probably made money, government funded, putting people in tents. So, here he is whining about financial burden. So, he must be in a tent now. Shillington, that's such a good name. So, these poverty pimps, white privileged poverty pimps, they would never want their children in a tent. Just yours. They could never make a tent city on a street unless it was the most vulnerable people group that they could find. They tried to go to Chinatown, they couldn't do it there. They tried to go to Tours Town, they couldn't do that there either. The only neighborhood they could do it to was Little Native Town, and they knew it was Native Town. They didn't even research to, if you're gonna put natives in tents, you research. Where are they going to dig a hole for their poo and pee? So this guy wasn't even brilliant enough to know that you do not put toilets. People peeing and pooping on the street. He doesn't even know what's wrong with it. The smell was so hideous. He would come down here. He would have to get poop on the bottom of his uh, shoe. Fighting to keep people like a maniac. Intense. Now he's whining about money. Oh, money, money, money. I know families are in worse spots and it's going to hit them even harder. Yes, because you're a poverty pimp. 
went to university and didn't even come out of university smart enough to know that you don't put toilets on the streets, suds. Another good reason why you have a uh, tunnel down here named after you. The suds, the suds, um, stabbing tunnel. Oh, he's doing fear the government will take away your money when you have a new kid for child care. Well, first of all, it looks like you just had a baby, and I don't know who the hell puts a baby into daycare right away. Not that I'm judging, it's just I don't know who does that. So he's whining for more money. It's either six thousand dollars in debt or take our child out of daycare. Oh that's so hard. Look, look, look at their tent. They live in a tent. Oh no, it's not a tent. It's probably a house. Or at least an apartment building. They could have housed some of the people that they were keeping in tents. They could have done that, you know? Take them over to their yard, but they were too ashamed. They were ashamed of the shit show that they create. Well, no, they were ashamed of the druggies. They were too ashamed to have them in their neighborhood. Here, let me give you a peek what we went through with crybaby Ryan Suds. That is just right. We saw that woman throw something on the street. That's because she was in a regular poor people. Regular poor people use, put stuff in the garbage. So what he did was poor bashing. That was a druggie. Big difference. So either he was calling all poor people, in which you have a lot of poor people since the pandemic. And uh, yeah, he should know that. He's whining about money. You know, and then how he got his tents to go across Canada was continuing to use the news. The politicians used him for a pawn to call these all homeless people. And they were homeless people, poor people, just regular, nice, poor people. They were not. Not one of these people were not on hard drugs living on our street. These people weren't even smart enough to use a toilet. Ryan wasn't even smart enough to know that you don't pee behind your tent. And it really pissed me off that when he put natives back in tents, he didn't even research that they have to have somewhere to dig, just like everyone else around the world that were living in tents at one time, to put their urine in their poo. He turned this into a dangerous, absolute shit show of hell. Some natives that lived in my building that are deceased now had pure hell trying to get out of the building for their last year of life. Some of them committed suicide in our neighborhood to get out. Others were euthanized. Yep, yeah, they were. Excuse me, can I get through, please? 
Shit. Yeah, well, we gotta have room to get to our homes. Holy shit! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I live here! Oh, shut up! Shut the fuck up! Shouldn't be this hard to get to your fucking apartment! That was nothing but misogynistic, rude, drugged out men. And all of us elderly people had to go through this on a daily basis. It was engineered by Crybaby that has a, uh, you know, a tunnel named after him, Ryan Stabbing Tunnels. So many people died because of his policies. This was a whole psyop across Canada. So this was, I believe, 2020. 20 or 2021 and it went across Canada these we didn't even have wheelchair access and he knows there's one-legged people all over our neighborhood little Indian town this guy here lives in our building but you'll never 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 catch the seller him standing up for anybody for wheelchair access or anything like that he doesn't have that capability, you know, just sits there and watches. Could you imagine any of you going through this shit and then the smell of urine? Oh, it was horrible. Get ass right. Shut up. Get off the fucking block. You can't even go to another neighborhood, you piece of shit. Fires like Fuck crazy. Are these guys screaming at. You certainly don't want to cry or be vulnerable on these fucking streets because these little predator street poopers will fuck you over. Sounds like maybe somebody's being raped in the tent. Having sex in the tent. Turned out 100% women that were in the tent were uh, sexually assaulted. What is that? Like you can't tell if that's sex noise or freaking help me noise. Are you kidding? 